Let's Encrypt is a certificate authority that provides free TLS certificates for websites which you can also take advantage of within your Kubernetes cluster. In this video, we will install Cert Manager in a Kubernetes cluster to easily generate and renew certificates for any application running in the cluster. In order to obtain a certificate from Let's Encrypt, you will need to install their Acme client, which will be responsible for requesting your certificates. In Kubernetes, the client is installed as part of Cert Manager. For the Let's Encrypt servers to validate that you control the domain name for the certificate, they use challenges which your Acme client must solve. The first challenge we will use today is the HTTP01 challenge where Let's Encrypt will provide a token to your Acme client. The Acme client then includes the token together with the thumbprint of your account key in a file which it then places on your web server. The HTTP challenge requires that you have created a DNS A record pointing to the IP address where your web server is reachable. In Kubernetes, this is likely the IP address of your ingress controller. The web server will be a temporary HTTP server pod that is spun up by a SAT manager. A service and an ingress object are also created to enable HTTP access to the HTTP solver pod. Let's Encrypt then tries to retrieve this file several times from different servers. If these validation checks get the right responses from your web server, the validation is considered successful and the client can go on to issue your certificate. A second way in which Let's Encrypt validates domain ownership is using the DNS01 challenge. In this scenario, after Let's Encrypt gives your Acme client a token, your client will create a TXT record derived from that token and your account key and put that record at acmechallenge.yourdomain. The Acme client is able to do this by connecting to your DNS provider's API. Once this new DNS record has successfully propagated through the DNS system, Let's Encrypt will query the DNS system for that record. If it finds a match, the client will proceed to issue a certificate. Of course, not all DNS providers are currently supported, so you might want to check out the Let's Encrypt website for a list of supported DNS providers. I'll have that information in the readme file linked in the description below. So now that we have a basic overview of how the challenges work, let's dive in and get Cert Manager installed on a Kubernetes cluster. To install Cert Manager, run the following command. This command will apply the Cert Manager manifest to your Kubernetes cluster. Once we have successfully installed Cert Manager, we can now run kubectl get pods in the Cert Manager namespace to check that everything installed correctly. Issuers and cluster issuers are Kubernetes resources that represent certificate authorities in the cluster. They are able to generate signed certificates by honoring certificate signing requests. We create an issuer that issues certificates in only a single namespace and a cluster issuer that issues certificates cluster-wide. Issuers and cluster issuers are capable of working independently and can issue self-signed certificates or can be configured with a trusted root CS certificate, or can even register with an upstream certificate authority like Let's Encrypt. To create an issuer using the HTTP01 solver, run the following command, which applies this cluster issuer manifest. This command creates a cluster issuer named Let's Encrypt Prod. It configures the issuer to use the Let's Encrypt production server specifies an email address for notifications and sets up the HTTP01 solver to use Nginx ingress. kubectl get issuer shows all the cluster issuers set up in the cluster. kubectl describe cluster issuer shows the status of the cluster issuer. Make sure that the status is ready and that it shows Acme account registered. Otherwise, you might need to double check your configuration for the cluster issuer. You might have taken note of the Let's Encrypt URI I use in this example as the production server. Both the production and staging servers are rate limited to protect from abuse, with the staging server having much higher limits. So when starting out, it is recommended that you start by creating an issuer that uses the staging server just so you can iron out all of the testing issues. I have already run several tests using the staging server 
and now that I have a working configuration, I can confidently use the production issuer. So now that we have our cluster issuer set up, we can start issuing certificates for use in our cluster. We also need to have a registered domain name for this. And as we discussed earlier, we need to create a subdomain and point its DNS A record to a server IP address where it will be accessible. You can easily do this in the administration panel of your domain registrar. I have registered the domain homecube.io with Cloudflare and I will demonstrate how you can easily create subdomains and DNS records in the Cloudflare panel. To use SAT Manager with Cloudflare, you need to create an A record pointing to the Ingress Controller IP address. And to do that, you can follow these steps. Go to the Cloudflare panel and navigate to DNS and then Records and under DNS Management, click on Add Record. Select a record of type A. Set the name to a subdomain of your choice. Set IP address to the Ingress Controller IP address. Click Save to create the A record. Now, depending on how your local network is set up, you might need to open up port 80 on your firewall or router and also potentially do port forwarding to your Ingress Controller's IP address. In order for you to solve the HTTP challenge, your Ingress Controller must be accessible via the public IP address you configured in the DNS A record. If you have set up everything correctly, you should be able to now start generating certificates. To generate a certificate using Cert Manager, run the following command to apply this certificate YAML. This command creates a certificate resource named Secure Homecube IO in the default namespace. It specifies the secret name where the certificate will be stored, sets the duration and renewal period, defines the subject details, creates a private key using the RSA algorithm and specifies the DNS name for the certificate. The issuer ref references the previously created Let's Encrypt Prod cluster issuer. The generated certificate for secure.homecube.io will be stored in the specified secret and it will be automatically renewed before expiration based on the renewal period specified. After the certificate is issued by SAT Manager, it will be stored in a Kubernetes secret. You can verify the creation of the secret by running the following commands. kubectl get certificate shows the newly created certificate with the ready status set to true. kubectl get secret lists all the secrets in the default namespace and you should see the newly created secret. kubectl describe command provides detailed information about the secret including the certificate data and the private key. At this point, the certificate is successfully created and we can use or reference the data stored in the secret to secure applications in the default namespace. Let's Encrypt does not currently support issuing wildcard certificates using the HTTP01 solver. It can also be possible that we are operating in a network that makes the HTTP solver difficult to implement due to some kind of firewall restrictions. We can get over these limitations by using the DNS01 solver. Let's Encrypt can connect to the API of a supported DNS provider to automatically issue and renew certificates. So let us see how we can upgrade our current configuration to include DNS as a way to validate domain ownership using Cloudflare, which is a supported DNS provider. To authenticate with Cloudflare and use the DNS01 solver, you need to create an API token. In the Cloudflare panel, go to User Profile, then API Tokens, and here under API Tokens, click Create Token. Configure the token with the following settings. Set the permissions to Zone DNS Edit and Zone Zone Read, and set the zone resources to include all zones. To store the Cloudflare API token securely in Kubernetes, create a secret using the following command. Replace API token with the actual Cloudflare API token value. This command creates a secret named Cloudflare API token secret with the API token stored securely as the API token key. To add a DNS01 challenge solver to the issuer, you can modify the existing cluster YAML as follows. In this example, a DNS01 challenge solver is added to the existing cluster issuer configuration. The DNS01 solver uses Cloudflare as the DNS provider and the API token secret ref refers to the secret that contains the Cloudflare API token. The selector section specifies the DNS names and zones 
for which the DNS01 challenge solver should be used. In this selector configuration, certificate requests for the secure.homecube.io subdomain will use the HTTP solver, while all other subdomains ending with homecube.io will use the DNS solver. To generate a certificate using the updated cluster issuer, run the following command. This command creates a certificate resource named registry homecube.io in the Hubber namespace. The issuer ref references the updated Let's Encrypt Prod cluster issuer that now includes the DNS01 solver configuration. The generated certificate for registry.homecube.io will be stored in the specified secret and it will be automatically renewed before expiration based on the renewal period specified. If you run into any issues while requesting for certificates, always refer to Let's Encrypt's troubleshooting guide which provides some guidance on where issues are likely to occur and how to address them. Any issues are likely due to a misconfiguration of some kind, so you might need to check the status of the certificate request, the order or the challenges for a hint on where the problem could be. So we can now use the newly created certificate to secure my Harbor registry web portal, which as you can see here, is using a self-signed certificate and is displaying a warning. To use the certificates in an ingress resource, you can create an ingress YAML file and apply it to the cluster. Here's an example. This YAML file defines an ingress resource named Hubber Ingress 2 for the hostname registry.homecube.io. It redirects HTTP requests to HTTPS using SSL redirection and sets the backend service as Hubber Portal listening on port 80. The TLS section specifies the host name and the secret name where the certificate is stored. Apply this YAML and we should have a new ingress that will handle the traffic for registry.homecube.io securely using the issued TLS certificate. We can refresh our browser page and as you can see the certificate warning has now disappeared. You can also click on the padlock icon and navigate to the certificate details for more information about the issued certificate. I mentioned earlier that one of the best features of using DNS validation is that it enables us to issue wildcard certificates to secure multiple subdomains and a single domain with a single certificate. Creating wildcard certificates works in pretty much the same way except for the DNS name which would be written as a wildcard as shown in this example. Once created, you can use the same certificate to secure multiple subdomains. So hopefully at this point, you are now able to set up a SAT manager in your cluster and start issuing and automatically renewing certificates for all of your domains. Don't forget to check out the Git project in the description below and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.